The most prolific pace bowling career in the history of Test cricket is set to come to its conclusion. 700 wickets and 21 years later, James Anderson is bringing the curtain down on a storied career. We look back on it with Tom Moody, Mitch McLennigan and Varun Aaron, a couple of pace bowlers to pay tribute mm -hmm. to the ultimate pace bowler as far as Test cricket goes. Tom, just your thoughts on the legacy of James Anderson. Well, remarkable, really, his career. Uh, first, you think about what he is doing, and that is bowling fast, which is a hard thing to do physically, and to have the, the longevity that he's had uh, in the game from a physical standpoint is just remarkable. So it's a credit to his professionalism and his endurance as a fast bowler. And then to remain... Uh, on top of his game for such a long period of time and dominate oppositions, uh, you know, season in and season out uh, and have the drive and the hunger to continue to evolve as a fast bowler and uh, be challenged against new oppositions because he would have gone through a number of different players from many, many countries uh, is a credit to, you know, everything that he's done uh, with his professionalism and the way he's uh, prepared as a fast bowler. The stats show the story, of course, 700 wickets, almost mm. 100 clear of the second best. But that was Stuart Broad, a career that began after Anderson's, ended before his. Uh, is that longevity then what makes Anderson the standout? Well, definitely it is. Um, I, I think it's the skill um, that really stands out to me. Is There's not many people who could present the scene the way he did um, and get the ball to basically do whatever he wanted. So the skill aspect was something that I always admired, mainly because... I couldn't do it. Um, <laughs> so then you look at guys like that and you try and get cues of, of how they do it. And one, one of the other things as well is that um, he's left a real legacy, um, particularly in England and any touring team going to England. I remember first time term, turning up at Lords, and the first question you ask people who have been there before is, is which end does Jimmy Anderson bowl from or which end does Stuart Broad bowl from? So that partnership and what they've left and stamped on the game in England and around the world is probably the most significant thing. 188 tests, that seems an unthinkable number for anyone, but for a fast bowler, as a fast bowler, how do you look back on Anderson's career? Coming back to Tom's point, uh, longevity is something which is really underrated because to do that day in, day out for 20 years for your country is not at all easy. And you know what, I just think he's an artist at what he does. Uh, the kind of mastery he's... He, he has over a skill over, over a long period of time, a second to none. What, what Mitch said, unbelievable seam presentation can even get the seam to deck off if, if, there's, if there's no, if there's no uh, swing with, with the wobble seam. Uh, bowled some really good reverse swinging spells in India. I remember that game at the Eden Gardens getting Sachin bowled and a couple of others. Um, that's still etched in my memory. So there have been so many conversations where people have said that, you know what, he's bowled so much in England and stuff like that. Okay, other, other guys have bowled in England. Why haven't they picked up so many, so many wickets, you know? It's not easy to pick up those many wickets. And as a fast bowler, it's, it's a different question when, when, when you're playing on a ranked turner. But as a fast bowler, to, to run in, get your rhythm right, land the ball on the seam every single time in those areas, hit the stumps, is never easy. Tom's been a fast bowler, Mitch has been a fast bowler, I'm a fast bowler. It is special. Yeah, he's one of those guys that when you played against him or you saw him in the flesh do what he does, it makes you realise that you're not very good. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the other thing you need to, to recognise is that, you know, he, he's playing the bulk of his cricket at home because that is his home, you know, England is his home, so they're going to have an English summer where they're going to play multiple test matches and, and then obviously out of season he'll travel around the world and play, which he's done so, so successfully. But... What he has done, you can sort of point at uh, that, yeah, OK, his record at home is unbelievable, but he's had to work on that record. He's had to, ad he's had to take advantage of the ball, the Duke ball, and, and there would have been a period in his career that he would have used the reader as well, because in mm. England at one f mm. at point they were using mm. both balls. And mm. I remember one summer they would toss the coin, the captains would toss the coin to which ball they oh, were going yeah. to use. Um, so he's had to adapt that way, but also uh, adapt to his home conditions. So he's had to evolve in his own, own home conditions and master those conditions. And no one's done it better. You know, no one's done it better than him where he has been the threat throughout his whole career for such a long period Ooh, yeah. in knowing how to undermine a, a top order of an opposition on day one at Lords or wherever it may be at Old Trafford or Trent Bridge 
and he has turned up and done it year after year after year. That's one part, how well he mastered those conditions at home, as Tom points out. But since there was so much debate around how Anderson did away from home, you look at those numbers away from home, it's still 266 wickets at an average below 30, mm. which for many would count as a great career just in that sample itself. Yeah, phenomenal. And the only reason that you're questioning those numbers at all, or anyone ever did, was purely because he was so dominant at home. So, you know, and the change of ball, like you talk about, it's always a, a massive conversation point. But it's just purely that uh, it was more difficult for him to do that overseas, what he did so exceptionally well in England. So he was, he was godlike in England conditions, and he was well, world-class in other conditions. It was just that benchmark was so high. You brought up that series from 2012, which surely counts high up in Anderson's achievements because a Test Series win in India, that's not happened much through these 20 years. And you look at his career numbers in India, an average around 25. In Pakistan, an average below 20. To do that in the subcontinent, having bowled here so much, what does that speak to Anderson's legacy? Like I said, I, I, that's why I brought it up because so many people talk about him just getting wickets in England, which is so untrue because uh, I've seen him bowl in India and he does things with the ball which even the Indian bowlers then couldn't do because especially in that in the 2012 series he bowled exceptionally well especially with the reversing ball and uh, somebody like him you don't get 700 or test wickets by just bowling at home you have to bowl everywhere you have to do well everywhere you got to make your team win and he's left a huge legacy he's an inspiration to many fast bowlers he's an inspiration to fast bowlers who actually want to want to push push the envelope um, go beyond a certain age and play the game. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's unbelievable. It's just like what Federer did with, with tennis. He's done with fast bowling. Yeah, question I, I'd love someone to ask him is, is whether he would trade or how many wickets would he trade? Would he trade 50 wickets to get at that extra 19 runs, the highest score with the mm. bat of 81? If he's like most batters, it'd be an interesting question to pose. Oh, I tell you what, it'd be like putting the cherry on the cake. That that would be an amazing career. Hundred plus all those all those wickets. Six fifty if we're talking about fifty wickets. And a hundred. <laughs> and fifty is a bit much. Maybe ten. <laughs> Maybe ten. <laughs> ten test wickets is big. Yeah. Yeah. That eighty one is a game you saw from close quarters when James Anderson and Joe Root kept batting on and on for the tenth wicket. Oh yeah. That was a really flat wicket. Uh, even, <laughs> even, <laughs> even 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 Mohammad Shami had a had a day out. I remember Mohammad Shami's Flat bat, uh, Anderson for a six straight down the ground. It was really flat wicket. So if there was ever a place he could have gotten a test hundred, it was at Nottingham in that game. <laughs> All right, coming back to Anderson's primary skill set, the bowling. It's always a tough conversation, but worth asking the question: Where would you place Anderson among <coughs> fast bowlers in Test cricket? You know what? I I, I hate sort of comparing eras um, because. You know the situation in everyone's era is very very different, uh, and the circumstances are very different. You, you, you look back and everyone's got the right to sort of claim a generation as, as a, you know, being a dominant bowler or a dominant batter. Um, I think it's best just to remember James Anderson, I think, is England's greatest ever bowler. And I think that's exactly what he is. Is, is the question any easier to answer if we say just bracketed to Anderson's times? So if you look at the 21st century, where do you place him? I think Tom's right. I think you, you're looking at him as English, England's best ever bowler. But one other part which we haven't spoken about is that partnership. Mm. I, I think that partnership with Stuart Ford is probably the, the best uh, bowling partnership that I've ever seen. Um, the only one that comes to mind from, from my era um, is, is Bolt and Saudi. Um, you know, the ability to be on the park as much. I should enjoy it, you? Fast bowlers, mate. We don't care mm -hmm. about spinners. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so back at it. No, but they're just phenomenal what they did together. Uh, great partnership. Uh, you just knew that there was always a threat and something was always going to happen day one. What will you remember the most from James Anderson's career? Ashwin and Jadeja. Uh, yeah, him getting Ashwin and Jadeja out. Like he's saying, <laughs> no, I'm just, I, I, I'm always going to remember that spell he bowled in the ashes. I remember uh, Chris Rogers and David Warner were opening. I don't remember which year. But he was hooping the ball. He was bowling over the wicket. He was starting the ball on fourth leg stump to both of them. And the ball was ending up fourth off stump. And they did not have a clue. They could not touch the ball. It was just like, how is he doing that? You know, it, un, like unreal control. 
and he was doing it and then he would hoop one back in from outside of it was just mastery like as a fast bowler when you watch that you you're like man i actually need to do something like that you know mm. for you oh uh, I love the the little chat with Mitch when Mitch was at the non strikers <laughs> end and and Jimmy comes in and and takes a wicket that, oh, yeah, that was, that was yeah. there's just little entertaining moments like that there's so many ashes moments that I'm sure you you're across but uh, just moments he was just an ultimate competitor uh, he was always in the fixture and, and always competing yeah I think for, for for mine as an Australian you know ashes cricket is sort of an I- iconic sort of uh, series and you know just the threat that he always posed against the Australian top order as Varun talked about you know his ability to swing the ball both ways you know virtually with his eyes closed and have the control that he did and, and give many many Australian top orders over a long period of time you know headaches so you know I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Australian batters that are going to be quite uh, happy to see that uh, he's you know hanging up uh, the bowling boots at the end of Lords. All right. Thank you, Tom Mitch Varun from three fast bowlers to one great fast bowler. That was our tribute to James Anderson. A career that began at Lords 21 years ago will end at Lords, the first test of England's home summer against West Indies. <laughs>